Hello to all of you. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Tech24. Today, we talk about how the global pandemic has accelerated research around RNA, giving way to two vaccines against COVID-19, but also opening up new horizons for cancer treatments. And in Test 24, Peter O'Brien will review two indie games that have been huge successes, Hades, which takes place in the underworld of Greek mythology, and Valheim, in which you fight to earn your place in the Norse afterlife. But first, scientists from the Chinese National Center for Nanoscience and Technology in China have shared a groundbreaking discovery. They were able to develop a new mRNA vaccine to help treat cancer. The vaccines against COVID-19 help the immune system to recognize and attack a protein made by the virus, the so-called spike protein. But this time, scientists have used that same principle, isolating a strand of RNA to instruct immune cells to neutralize a protein produced by a tumor cell. When injected into mice with melanoma, the RNA successfully caused tumors to shrink and prevented them from metastasing. Well, let's turn to our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello and welcome, Peter. Hi, Julia. So tell us more about how mRNA actually works. Right, so whereas tra traditional vaccines kind of mimic a disease and trigger the body's immune system that way, a RNA vaccine works in a very different way and it could actually be a lot cheaper and quicker to produce. So these vaccines are made up of strands of messenger RNA which contain genetic information which instructs cells to produce a certain type of antigen. The immune system then recognizes this antigen and is prepared to fight the infection. Now, the, the, the potential of these RNA vaccines is very exciting, not just pre pre for prevention, as you say, but also for treatment, including, as we're now discovering, for cancer. Thank you very much, Peter. Now, the last few years have seen many breakthroughs indeed in the development of treatments against cancer, with, for instance, the emergence of nanotech-driven radiotherapy, as well as immunotherapy. Progress has also been made in the detection of cancerous cells, which is key to battle the disease. Some companies are even trying to bring to market everyday IoT able to detect early signs. In Russia, for instance, the startup ProRodinky uses artificial intelligence to identify the presence of melanoma in photos of moles. The best tool for picking up the early signs of skin cancer might already be in the palm of your hands. Thanks to ProRodzinki, people can now keep track of their moles at the touch of a button. This is a photo of my mole. I got a recommendation to visit a doctor immediately, which I did. Developed by a team of dermatologists in Russia, the app uses artificial intelligence to examine photos of moles and detect the presence of potential cancer cells. Each photo is also evaluated by at least two experts. The app then tells the user whether a checkup or further action is needed. ProRodinki helps people track their health. The app encourages users to find 20 minutes to see a doctor, undergo tests, and get diagnosed. Several apps using similar technology are available to download. The use of AI is based on the analysis of photos of already diagnosed cases. Skin Vision's algorithm provides users a risk assessment of their moles within 30 seconds. In situations where photos show a high risk of skin cancer, the app offers advice on where to seek treatment. While such apps don't replace an expert opinion from a medical professional, they do encourage users to keep an eye on their moles and carry out regular checks. 1.3 million cases of skin cancer were diagnosed worldwide in 2018, according to the World Cancer Research Fund. Creators of skin cancer detection apps hope their technology will help diagnose cases earlier and save lives. We're now going to move on to a whole other story. Burgundy is not the first place that comes to mind when talking about tech, but it's now home to a new center to train future video game creators. A small town in the region which has suffered economically is now preparing to welcome students, a much-needed boost to the area, which has seen its population fall in recent years. Our colleagues at France 2 have this report. Educating the next generation of the tech industry while giving a much-needed boost to a struggling town. In this case, Tonnerre. Population 4,700, half of three decades ago due to economic downturn. But this new school could change that, providing training in the gaming sector for up to 2,000 students in the years to come. 
Alors ici, on forme à des métiers qui servent à la création de jeux vidéo, voilà, dans un premier temps, et par extension, tous les types d'applications qui vont apparaître sur des écrans interactifs. Teaching has already started for the first group of 45 students. They come from all over France and have different reasons for choosing Tonnerre. Je me suis dit, ah bah chouette, c'est cool, une, une école qui ouvre pas si loin de, de chez mes parents, autant faire euh, au plus proche. Ça me permet d'être dans une ville qui est plus calme que les, les grandes villes où ces écoles sont généralement situées. Elle avait un coût qui était minime comparé aux autres écoles dans ce domaine. Indeed, at 10,000 euros for a five-year course, it's four times cheaper than the equivalent in other towns, and that has made recruitment much easier. Être à Tonnerre, ça nous a permis vraiment de casser les prix. Ici, quand on est à Tonnerre, le coût de la vie en général est moins cher, le loyer est moins cher, le mètre carré de locaux, bien évidemment, est beaucoup, beaucoup moins cher que si on était dans le centre de Paris. Investment, which is slowly changing the face of the town. The school building used to be a supermarket. Meanwhile, this investor's renovating an old hotel to create student housing, where a brand new studio will be rented out at just 400 euros per month. Oui, aussi, c'est sûr. Par exemple, à Paris, le prix du logement est tellement élevé que c'est même pas sûr que même, enfin, que j'aurais pu y aller. Quoi. The influx of students is already being felt among some small businesses, alors, alors. as these aspiring engineers put down roots in Tonnerre amid hopes it will blossom into a high-tech hub. Like any entertainment industry, the games industry is tough to get ahead in. From long hours of crunch at the big studio to the mammoth amount of work indie developers set themselves. We have, however, seen a string of big successes from tiny studios. And to talk more about it, we're going to once again turn to Peter O'Brien. Yeah, let me give you a few examples of indie games which have really hit the jackpot. So this is Human Fall Flat, and it was made by just one person, and they recently hit 25 million sales. Another example is the farming RPG called Stardew Valley. That again was made by one man, Concerned Ape is his alias, and that's hit 10 million sales. Um, Inner Sloth, who you might know because they were the four person team behind the game, which absolutely exploded in lockdown called Among Us. In November, they hit a record of half a billion users in that month. Now, I think you've been impressed by another game. It's called Valheim. I think I'm yeah, pronouncing it that's right. That's right, Valheim. Yeah. And, it, and it came out this month. Yes, so they are very impressive as well because they've got a team of five people and they've created this massive open world Viking adventure game. Um, it sold two million in less than two weeks. Now, I'm not saying at all it's easy being an indie developer. In fact, it can be a lot harder because there's a, of these tiny handful of games which have been a big success, you've got to remember that last year on Steam alone, which is the platform on PC for selling games, 10,000 games were released in just that, that one year. Now, of course, there's also high expectations at the big studios. Uh, we've seen some of them, like Rockstar CD Projekt Red, criticized uh, for their crunch to finish games and making their employees work longer hours. Yeah, and there's no guarantees that crunch will actually make your game better in the end. I mean, look at CD Projekt Red's um, Cyberpunk 2077. It was Its quality on launch was nothing like Red Dead Redemption 2 made by Rockstar. But let me just point out this game, Hades, which was made by the studio um, Supergiants. They're based in San Francisco and they've won plaudits for treating their employees in what they think is the right way. So they're mandating at least 20 days holiday a year and come 5 p.m. on a Friday, they can't be sending any work emails or having any work communication whatsoever. But Hades won 50 Game of the Year awards last year. Very well, but we're going to stay with us because we're going to keep on talking about indie games in Test24. Okay, so go on, Peter. Did all the free time Supergiant staff had on their hands to uh, create their project, did it actually pay off? Well, I'd say so. I mean, the Game of the Year awards say it all for me, but I'd say it absolutely paid off because Hades is a truly innovative roguelike. Well, what's a roguelike? It's a kind of game where the levels are procedurally generated. So every time you die, they reshuffle and you have to go through a different path. And you die a lot in this game. Um, like any roguelike, you die a lot and have to start all over again. But what's so impressive about Hades is that it's not repetitive or boring to keep dying because they keep drip feeding you into information about the characters, about the plot. They drip feed you new gameplay features each time as well. And the writing is actually superb, which is still quite rare in, in games. Um, it's 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 very impressive what they've done with such a small team. 
I'll take away the fact that it's not boring to die. Thank you. <laughs> Let's emerge now from the other underworld of Greek mythology and head to Val, uh, Valhalla, uh, the uh, Norse afterlife. Yeah, so whereas in Hades you're trying to escape hell, as you say, in Valheim you are trying to earn your place in heaven. And you do this by killing a lot of monsters, of course, but also building cute little houses. And like Hades, it's burst through its genre, uh, which is the survival genre, and, and really broken new ground on it. So survival games can typically be a bit monotonous because you're constantly having to farm material to improve your stuff, and you're constantly having to keep yourself fed so you don't die. Mm. This improves or removes all of those irritating aspects and keep what's, keeps what's fun about survival games, which is the exploration, and the sense of adventure, and of course, the building. This is, um, this is a little base I made with my friends. Do you like it? I like it very much. Thank you. That's Thank truly you. my type of game. Thank oh, you nice. <laughs> very much, Peter. It brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.